He's been calling area high school sports for more than two decades. Now he's calling the Shauna Clears. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning with the Myrtle Beach Herald. We're focused on our director, Lane Harris. Good morning, Lane. Good morning, Greg. Thanks Thank for having me on. This is a pleasure. I know. It's so amazing. You know, just last week, we celebrated two years of Carolina People. Well, I'm glad you got me on. I was going to have my feelings hurt. <laughs> I, I know. We didn't do it in year one. We didn't do it over year two. Now we're going into year three. We had to make that happen. Well, it's been a great two-year run here. Uh, the show's been great. Uh, it's, um, it's amazing to see how the, the whole concept of the show has really caught on and more viewers every year. And um, see how your improvement as a host has gone from when Thanks. you started out. We kind of had to hold your hand, and, and now you've gotten to where you, you're really good at this, and you make people feel comfortable, and that's a big tribute to you. I'm propped up by you and Keith, obviously, and the excitement of being propped up is an easy thing. Of course, Donald and Hilda originally having come up with this idea. Hilda coming up with the idea, and then Donald helping uh, make it happen and making sure I was in good hands with you and Keith Cetri. So it's sure been a lot easier. It's, it's just amazing to think that it's taken us this long to get you in because there have been a lot of things, you know, the kickoff of Coastal Carolina football right. and the ability to talk to you about that since you're traveling with the team and keeping everyone on, in the radio side up to date on that as well as Beach Ball Classic. We could have gotten you in to talk about that from your excitement mm -hmm. there as well as just talking about your daughters. You know, I think about Alex and our time there at that camp, golly, we're out in Lake Marion somewhere right. and seeing her jump off and the excitement of folks who traveled with us to so many of the locations. Yeah, it's... Um being a father, as, as you're, you're starting to figure out, of, of a daughter um, is, uh, is quite an extraordinary uh, uh, opportunity in life. And uh, I've been blessed by three, and I, I tell people on a regular basis, it's, it's the Lord's humor. I mean, he, he says, you know, he looks at you and he says, okay, you like girls so much. He's paying me back for all those years of youthful indiscretion. He says, oh, you yeah. like girls so much? Here. Here's three of them to take care of. Hey, back. So, yes, right. But, uh, but I love my girls to death, and uh, they are they are the light of my life, and um, and I uh, would not change a thing for them. Yeah, I've seen that in you, Lane. Of course, you're the uh, are, you're not the oldest. You're the kind of second of four boys. You can't say middle because there were four boys. That's right. I, I grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, my dad was a um, a school principal. My mom stayed at home with us back in those days, which which moms did back then. Uh, I've got an older brother, Herb, who's a year and a half older than I am. Uh, younger brother, Bruce, who's a year and a half younger. And my baby brother, Joe, is four years younger than I. And at one time, back in 19, I want to say 79, we were all four down here at Myrtle Beach, had different wow. jobs. Uh, down here at the beach, so we've uh, we've spent a lot. I've spent most of my adult life in Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. except for a few years when the tip television business took me to some other places. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I can't call myself a local because I was not born here. Right. But I've spent a lot of time here and know a lot of people here, and it's um, it's a great place to live. Golly, Lane, so many from the Triad of North Carolina or the Charlotte area, or the Triangle, move to Myrtle Beach and make it home. I mean, you you must know a ton of folks even growing up in Southern Guilford that have moved down here and have made it home, not locals, but that have absolutely wrapped around the Myrtle Beach area. Well, the people in the Greensboro area and like Charlotte, Raleigh, as, as you mentioned, this is their beach. Yeah. Uh, they've been coming here for years. Uh, the first time I came down here was my junior year. I came down, I tagged along with my brother to come down with a bunch of his friends who came down for senior week because right. he was a year older than I was. Well, you know, as older brothers are, you know, they don't want your younger brother to go. But at that time, you know, I, I let him go and do his thing, and I kind of hung out by myself because there was none of my friends were down because they were all juniors. Oh, so man. I kind of hung around Myrtle Beach, uh, stayed at the old, um, God, what was the name of it? La Rocca Hotel, oh, right across, and it's not even there anymore. Yeah. Uh, as, I think it's actually Bert Anderson owned it. It's Caroline's Grill. Um, and we stayed there, and the next year, I brought a bunch of my senior buddies down to Myrtle Beach, oh, and we yeah. stayed at the La Rocca, La Rocca Hotel. And uh, I'll never forget one of my buddies, we, we pulled up to the La Rocca, and we're, we're parking in the parking lot, and, and, and one of my buddies goes, why are we stopping here? <laughs> like, this is where we're staying. Oh my God! And, and, and he said, "This is." And it was. It was a nice place. Yeah. It was very affordable for right. a bunch of, for a bunch of 18-year-old kids yeah. right out of high school. We had a great time that 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 year. And I think most people in in the North Carolina area, that's when their first really big memories of Myrtle Beach. Or if they don't go there as a kid, or, go, right. or go, come to other beaches as a kid, is that senior week at Myrtle Beach because oh, it yeah. really it really made an um, uh, an unerasable part of my mind and, and made it. 
I don't, I want to live here. I like it down here. And, uh, and shortly after I graduated from uh, college, I came down here permanently. You were exactly right. I remember my senior beach week, Lane. Not to focus on me, but we came down here, and on the second day, we got kicked out of the unit we were in. <laughs> I had to go stay with a couple from Wendell in their home because we were scattered all asunder. Yeah. Yeah, that senior beach week is something you don't forget. And it, it's, you know, you think about that. Now, your other, your three brothers. Right. All y'all were down here together in 79, you said? That's right. That's right. Where are they now? Uh, Herb is back at home. Right. Uh, Bruce is back at home. And Joe is back at home. They're all back in Greensboro. You're kidding. Yeah, my mom and dad own about uh, 26 acres on the south side of Greensboro. And Herb is single still. And he has a, um, um, uh, a large, a large for him house that he's been working on. He's been building it now for about 12 years. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long project in the making. Uh, and, but he's he's happy with what he's done. He has a young son, uh, Josh, who's about uh, 11. Um, Bruce uh, is my younger brother, and he is um, he's working in real estate. He buys and sells properties, rents properties out, and he's doing very well with that. He has five kids, and wow. they are all just precious. Daniel's the oldest, who's nine, and the baby. Um, Mary's yeah, Mary. Right. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. The youngest is Mar Mary's the youngest girl. Right. He's got three girls in a row, and then the baby boy is um, Gabriel. Uh, who, he's, he's like six months. Wow. And so he's got you know all of them, all five kids under nine years old. But they are just a treat to be around. His wife Abby's a lovely young lady, and, and when they come down, we spend a lot of time together. Oh yeah. And it's it's uh, it's really keeps you young being around kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he comes down, we always get together and cook out with all mine. It's 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 usually a pretty rowdy bunch. And you said Joe's there in Greensboro and still. Jo Joe's got a little boy named. Um, uh, Ryan and Ryan's about seven, and uh, his wife Martha, who's a who's a hospital nurse, she works on the, every weekend and is home during the week with Ryan, and uh, she's a beautiful young lady too. And, and, and I'm I'm really blessed to have have good brothers and a good strong family core around me. Yeah, you said later after you all got out of the house that your mother, who had raised you all, mm -hmm. as your dad was a school principal, that that your mom got into real estate. And then yeah. you're talking about your the, the third born got into, as heavy into real estate, Bruce into real right. estate. And of course, and you've had, you've dabbled in real estate along with television for so long. What is it about real estate that's so exciting? Um, well, for my mom and dad, owning land up in Greensboro and, and putting that land to the best use was, was their, uh, their impetus in getting right. involved with it. They, uh, uh, my brother Bruce, Built his home on their land, mm -hmm. um, and he has a you know garage apartment over that he rents. He rents out a garage apartment over the house, and his garage apartment rent pays for the house mortgage. No way. And when you can do it that way, real estate's a smart thing to get into. Mom and dad, in turn, on that same cul-de-sac that he lives on, built uh, three duplex units, and they and they rent those out um, to to couples, and, and don't don't they don't spend a whole lot of money on it, but they they found a way to make that you know, income producing property for me and they just recently invested in some property down here in the Myrtle Beach area. That's right. A condo that they can come down and stay in when they want to come to the beach and visit me and the girls. Mm -hmm. And they've also helped me purchase a home and some rental property on my own that I that I'm living in right now. So mm -hmm. um, my mom does most of the work. My dad'll be the first one to tell you that. This is all this is all your mom's deal. Right. And she does it because she's had some rental management experience in the past and she does a real good job at it and, uh, and we're hoping to continue that here in the Myrtle Beach area and buy some more property. Absolutely. Golly Lane. You know, one thing, one thing I never knew about you until I saw a little write-up about you was that you were number three in your class at Southern Guilford High School. That's amazing. I knew you'd gone yeah. to Chapel Hill, which is a big deal, which yeah. is a huge deal. UNC Chapel Hill, and even finishing there. I mean, that's 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 incredible. But of course, being number three in your high school class. Well, I, I take it from uh, my dad was. Uh, and anybody who, who, who grew up in the Sumner community of, of, of Guilford County will tell you, Mr. Harris was a man you didn't mess with. <laughs> and when it came to doing my homework, I was the same. I didn't want to mess with him. I always took care of my schoolwork first. And um, I attribute um, not, not the, the threat of my dad, but I always wanted to excel in school. And I, and I had a core group of friends, about seven or eight guys that I hung out with in high school. Uh, and we competed not only in the athletic field, but we also competed in the classroom because nobody wanted to be up by the other one, mm. and, I, and I attribute that to, to my to my success. Also, had some great teachers at Southern Guilford High School, teachers that challenged me and and, and, and knew that I you know I, you know I can do better, and they kept pushing me. And I always wanted to get in Chapel Hill. It was the only school I ever wanted to go to, the only school I applied to. So I was very fortunate that they took me, but I knew I had to have good grades to get in there. Mm -hmm. 
number three in the class. You using that number as well. You were also a three sport athlete. Yeah. And we're huge in football. You know the excitement there, seeing all conference football, all county football in those last two years in high school. I think I saw you had the best defensive award your junior year, and then an MVP award your senior year. That's been nuts. Well. We didn't ever had any very good teams. <laughs> so our teams were terrible. So being the best player on, on poor teams is, is not really a thing to put your hat in. But I, I was uh, I had a great coach. C.K. Uh, Siler was a legend up in Guilford County. Uh, played against Kyle Petty uh, oh, in wow. high school, football yeah. and basketball. Uh, and we had some great rivals. Played with some great athletes. Joey Hackett was a, a year older than me. Joey went on to a great career with the Denver Broncos and Green Bay Packers. His little brother Dino played with the Kansas City Chiefs for many years. So, um, you know, a good friend of mine was Terry Miller, who played a lot of college basketball at Wingate College. He actually played a little bit at Coastal Carolina and Russ Bergman back in the uh, late 70s. So, mm -hmm. I, I had some good friends who pushed me also to uh, to excel at sports. And um, and that's one, one of the things I did when I, I walked on at Chapel Hill. Right. Uh, in my freshman year. And really got a big dose of, of big-time college football. It was uh, Bill Dooley's last uh, recruiting class wow. at Chapel Hill before he left to go to uh, to Virginia Tech. Uh, Jim Dickey, I never forget that Jim Dickey came, who later coached at Kansas State, and his son Daryl Dickey played for him at Kansas State. Came and talked to me. He didn't really recruit me, but talked to me and wanted to know what I wanted to do, what my goals were, and everything. And and he came to Southern and talked to me one day when I was in PE class. And uh, I think he had a whole lot to do with me getting in Chapel Hill because. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I'm glad they took me. It was a great experience there, and, and, and uh, you know, two years of my life that I'll never forget. Yeah, share with you a little about that. Walking on to a ACC, a huge at that time. ACC right. just having seven or eight schools or less schools. Obviously now expanding to 13 or, or more. The excitement of walking onto a football mm -hmm. team, being around with these guys who've all been recruited heavily, right. and then talk for a little bit about that process, if you will. I know you talked about the coach coming down there mm -hmm. to Southern to talk to you. I know right now. NCAA monitors carefully about sure. discussions between potential players and coaches, and what's that? What was that like for you? It was, it was very. Um, I was I was honored yeah. uh, to have it to have a. And he was the defensive coordinator, and he was somebody I knew about because I followed the Tar Heels all the way through my high school career. Right. Uh, it was. I was very honored to hit that he would come and talk to me. But uh, when you walk onto a campus, and it was really the first time I'd ever been away from home for any period of time oh yeah uh, uh, by myself on my own and remember staying in the, in the on the bottom floor of Erring House dorm which is a dorm where all the football players oh, yeah. stay over there and you look you look around at the other freshmen you, you walk into a locker room and there's you know 22 year old men who have been playing college or 23 year old men who have been caught playing college football and they are grown men you know mm -hmm. and you walk in there and you're a six foot one 165 pound 18 year old kid you got you, you see where you have to get to to be able to compete at that level. Um, the freshman class that I came in with, and you don't realize it when you walk in with these guys, but Lawrence Taylor was in my freshman class. Now right. Lawrence Taylor changed the game of pro football at the, at the linebacker position. Mm. Other names that people may recognize, Ron Wooten, who played for years with the New England Patriots, mm -hmm. Rick Donnelly, who played center for the Skins, Jeff Hayes, who kicked for the Skins, Donnell Thompson, who mm -hmm. played for the Indianapolis Colts and Baltimore Colts for years. I mean, these are all guys in my freshman class. Mm -hmm. So you can see why that if you really can't step up your game, you're not going to stay long at that level. And after about two years, I found out that tackling 280-pound fullbacks is hazardous to your health. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of shoulder injuries, I decided to start going to class. Golly, Lane. Well, of course, having made those bonds and those connections having mm -hmm. stayed with you since then, I mean, you've maintained your interest, incredible interest in sports, obviously having directed that coaches show for the Charlotte Hornets right. and been active there in Charlotte, creative services director at a TV station there in Columbia, mm -hmm. the excitement of being involved in stations in Columbia and Charlotte, and obviously all, so much of your involvement in the Myrtle Beach area. I was very fortunate when I when I left college and um I, I came down here, and my brother's, uh, my brother Herb, my older brother, said, you, you need to come down to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. What are you doing this summer? It was the summer after I'd stopped playing football. And I said, I'm not doing anything. He said, well, you need to come down to Myrtle Beach and work. And I came down here, and I worked as a lifeguard for George Lack at oh, Apache yeah. Campground. Right. And it was one of the best jobs I had in my life. Really? It yeah. was great. You know, you never had to leave the beach. They brought you food every day. Oh, right. um, just a, a great way to spend the summer down at the beach. And after I graduated from school, I came back down and worked on the beach at the safari um, hotel in the Polynesian Hotel on 10th Avenue South that last summer after of 81. And then I went to work for Cox Cable. And Cox Cable had just purchased KRB TV, which was a local TV station that uh, Elton Brunny with Hawaiian Tropic and, and Kathy D'Antoni owned. Mm -hmm. And then Cox Cable came in and bought them out. We became WCOX. Um, and at that stage, I was just, I just walked in. I just 
wanted to work in television. There was a small TV station, uh, and that was where I forged my relationship with Nat Adams, who works at, uh, at HTC, who's the executive producer of River Talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Donald Smith, who's uh, president of Lucky Dog. Right. And these are all the uh, relationships. Keith Setry, uh, I met Keith during those, during, during those years. I got really lucky, and um, we started covering things on a local basis. We were, uh, we were a local, local origination station, LO as we used to call them. And we started covering Myrtle Beach High School football. Mm -hmm. And Jeff McMurdy, who was a uh, DJ or, or, or a news director at um, KCQ, mm -hmm. would do the play-by-play. -play. And I got—I always had the opportunity to color, call high school football games, doing color commentary. I'm 23 years old, mm. and being a quarterback on offense and a defensive back on defense, and being used to calling defenses and reading defenses and seeing what's happening on the field, I, I was in my element. You I just were loved natural. it. Yeah. I, I, well, I, not, I wouldn't say a natural. I, I loved what I was oh, yeah. doing because when I go to a game, that's the, those are the things I'm watching. And, right. and just to be able to sit there and, and be able to inform the people in the audience who are watching What's the games yeah. is really something that, that um, I say this all the time. I do it for free, but don't tell anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, just, I just let it yeah, out. Donald, I'm sorry. Donald, yeah, whoever. <laughs> CCU. Now, but you do this for a lot of folks. You are the color commentator now for the Chanticleers. Yeah, I was uh, very fortunate. Matt, Matt Hogue and I worked together on some Coastal Carolina basketball about four years ago, right. and the opportunity for the new Coastal team came up, and he, uh, he came to me, and, and, and I was, I mean, truly honored uh, that, he, that he asked me to do that. Uh, we travel on the road with the guys. Joe Cashin uh, from Camden does the sideline reporting. Mac does the play-by-play, -play, and I get to sit back and, and call it as I see it. And it's uh, it's been extraordinary. I had the opportunity to to meet Jerry Falwell from Liberty University, oh, yeah. be involved with David Bennett and all the great coaches and all the young young athletes they have over there. And that, I, I'm really excited about where this team's going to be going. Hopefully this year when we get on the road, we go to Moorhead State this weekend, or actually last weekend. Right. Uh, hopefully we did good. Next week we got David. This weekend we got Davidson at home, and I'm hoping the Shawnee Clears really step up this year. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting when you think about that aspect, of, of course, of being a part of that. Share with us real quick. Color commentary means what? Well, you basically um, you're you're providing the information, more detailed information about the things that are happening on the TV screen. Your play-by-play -play guy calls. Gives you the down, gives you the distance, uh, gives you the particulars about the people who are catching the ball, throwing the ball, running right. the ball. Your color guy is going to come in and, and talk about the defense and how the defensive strategies, what the coaches are thinking about, uh, conversations that players have had about little little inside things that the play-by-play -play guy, not that he doesn't know about them, but the color guy will know about them that can bring insight into the game. It's more of an analyst. You're analyzing okay. what's happening on the field. Okay. You're breaking down what's happening right. and showing people why this team's doing well, why this team's not doing well. Right, right. CCU Radio. I mean, is this on the radio or is this on television? It's on the radio. Okay. We have a, 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 a we had a four-station market last year. I think we've expanded to six or seven stations. Right. So we're, we're starting to cover that whole eastern side of South Carolina getting up into North Carolina because David Bennett coming from Catawba, Salisbury, right. North Carolina right. has a huge following up there. You're going to start seeing more North Carolina athletes come in here. Uh, this team has already got a, a Division One caliber athletes on this team and they're getting more and more each year. Mm -hmm. Coastal Carolina will be a force to be reckoned with. I know. I saw I was watching the a local origination station. One of the football players who transferred here from uh, USC Big red-headed guy who was there with David Bennett talking about the excitement. He and another guy are both uh, seniors this year. Will be leaving, but the excitement for them. Be, this is a huge guy. I mean, it's it's amazing, Lane. Oh yeah, they're they're big kids. When you yeah. get out on that field, and you, I walk, I try to go to practice once or twice a week, right. just to see what they're working on, see what their what what their keys are, yeah. talk to the coaches, and get kind of inside there because that's what people want to know. When you when you listen to a radio broadcast, yeah. you, know, you can hear the down, you can hear the distance. You've got to be able to get something to these folks that they're not getting from just sitting here listening to the game. You've got to tell them what Coach Bennett's thinking or what he's, what he's known in the past, what the scouting reports are. The coaches are great. They give me their scouting reports so I can see what they're focusing their attention on this year, uh, on each team, which uh, helps me give a good insight to the folks who are listening at home on the radio. Well, you know, it's so exciting for us. we got about seven minutes, Lane, and we think about there's so many aspects we'd want to talk to you about. Give the viewers a sense of what happens kind of behind the scenes when you're putting together a show. You, have, I mean, obviously all they're seeing is you and me here. Mm -hmm. Someone's directing the show now. A little plug for Rochelle. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know. No, I'm directing it. Oh, I'm sorry. You, I'm, I'm, you didn't I'm, know that's that? Right. Uh, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Stand by two. Take two. Uh, yeah. Stand by one. Take one. Oh, my God. You like that? Yeah. Stand by yeah. three. Take three. Don't you ever forget. That I'm the one that's directing the show. That's right. No, no, no. no, no, Rochelle, no, no. Rochelle's taking that's over. good. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for reminding me. Golly. No, no, no. Rochelle, Rochelle is going to be doing the show. In, in my absence, I'm uh, going to be leaving to take a position with the Hoffman Group, Sunnerville Oceanfront Property. I'm excited about that. 
uh, you're going to be in good hands. Yes. Uh, Rochelle and, and Keith will, will, will keep Carolina people um, humping along, and, um, and it's, been, it's been a great two years here. I've, after living here for 25 years, you, you, I, I was surprised at how much I learned about more about what was happening in the community, and that, right. I think that's a tribute to Fox 43 and yourself, because that's why you did this show, right. to be a community service, and you, you've done a great job with, with making people aware of what's happening in this community, and really kind of giving them impetus to get out and get involved oh, yeah. with, with the things the Heart Association, Cancer Society, and all the many uh, uh, charities that you've, that you've promoted in the two years we've been doing the show. Well, you know, the toughest part of every interview is wrapping it up. And of course, we're doing an opening for it, Lane. It's been so exciting to see you and to see you in, in uh, we, we talk about you being mm -hmm. in your element, you know, yeah. see the from the quarterback side or seeing it from the defensive player side, to be able to see you in your element. When you help us encapsulate right. the openings of free show or, or the wrap-ups to make sure they're as poignant as possible, and I think that's been one of the uh, greatest insights for me to mm -hmm. see your ability to help encapsulate a show real well. Well, I think that's, that's where creativity comes in, and, and, and I've, I, feel, I feel like I'm a creative person. I love to write. Um, uh, but these shows that, that people see, they, there's a lot behind it. I mean, we come in with your studios on Thursday. We do five shows, uh, and it takes five to six hours to shoot it, and it takes five to six hours to edit it. So mm -hmm. uh, one of the good things about this show um, that Rochelle will be finding out very shortly is that you get to see it while it's shot, and you get to see it while it's edited. And if you get to watch it on the air, you get to see it three times. That's so right. you get to be pretty familiar with the people and what they're saying and what their messages are. And, uh, and I think that's important for the Myrtle Beach area. That's a real good point. Of course, you know, we travel a lot, and, and we haven't been traveling as much to the PD or Southeast and North Carolina as we used to. Folks are now coming to us. Right. You know, ne next week we've got someone coming in from Lake City. The week after that, someone coming in from Lumberton to pump up. And you remember we had that experience two years ago at the Robinson County Fair right. last year. We were at UNC Pembroke. This year they're coming to us because whether you're in Laurenburg right. or Lumberton or here in Myrtle, you're still watching it at the same time in your mm -hmm. home, and it's still coming out of the same tower in Marion County. In fact, we've had some great, uh, great shows in these two years. Great going on the road. It's fun going on the road, yeah. and um, and um, it's like I said, it's been it's been a great two-year period here. I'm, I'm going to miss it. I really am, mm. and I appreciate uh, and I thank you for all the things that you've oh, done for uh, for us and for Lucky Dog Productions. Yeah, we're going to miss you. We got a couple of minutes. You know, we think about so many things, Lane, and obviously you've helped highlight. Like, if your dad was a principal and your mom was there with y'all, was there a family business to step into? I guess it was education. I mean, can you remember back on your first childhood job? Now, I'll, I'll, the first childhood job I had was when we lived in Florida, and we used to we went out pick tobacco, exactly. but it wasn't cigarette tobacco; it was cigar leaf tobacco, oh. and it wasn't a tobacco that. In the old days, like you threw it up under your arm, like cigarette tobacco. It was you laid it in your hand because it had to be perfect. Wow. Because the cigarette, cigar wrapper tobacco has no holes in it, so mm -hmm. it was a very different type of job. But um, I didn't come out of uh, college wanting to be an educator. I, I was, I grew up in the television age, and w when I didn't play football one year, I had the opportunity to, to announce for the band at halftime in, uh, of the North Carolina games. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget. This is what turned me on the TV. I was sitting up there announcing for the band, and I looked over next to me, and Woody Durham was sitting in the booth, and Woody Durham, for you folks from Greensboro, was the sports director at WFMY-TV, right. and he called the game, and still calls the games for the North Carolina Tar Heels. And I looked at him and I said, now that would be a fun job. And the next day I went and signed up for my next semester's classes, and I got involved in radio and television and motion pictures there, RTVMP at North Carolina. And, um, and they always, they told me, they said, if you're here to make money, you're in the wrong business, right. yeah. and I'll agree with that. Yeah. This is not a, this is not a career that you're going to make a huge amount of money in. But I tell you what, it is a rewarding career. It is fun. It's not um, it's not repetitive. You do the, you do different things all the time, and that's and that's I think I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. Of course, a big career for you, Lane, is a full time dad. I mean, you know, three girls, and obviously the excitement of seeing their lives expand. And you know, we've seen Alex on the road with us. We haven't yeah. been able to see Brittany and Jordan as much, but Alex has been wonderful be with us on some of those trips and really ex experiencing her and how well she's been been trained by you all that that excitement for you you know it, when you think about accomplishments over mm -hmm. the last uh, 12 months the the involvement for you wh wh how could you could you pitch an old one in, in the last 12 months um, my relationship with my daughters all of them uh, Jordan especially my, my 18 year old who's soon be 19 uh, she lives with me now, and uh, our relationship uh, at once was, was very strained, and, and now uh, I'm proud to say that um, it's, it's stronger than ever. And uh, Brittany 
my 14 year old is a straight A student, basketball player, first year violin in the orchestra. I'm so proud of her and what she's accomplished. She stepped up to the high school this year, so this is a big jump for her. And Alex, Alex is my buddy. We just laugh and joke and cut up all the time, and uh, and I uh, I just value all my girls and love them to death. And um, and that's that's just just being a dad and being a better dad over the last 12 months. That's that's what I'm most proud of. And they'd probably be your inspiration then too. Aren't they? Well, my dad's my inspiration. I think as a as a parent, you look back on your childhood and you think about I used to. You know, oh, my dad's so mean to me, and oh, so, and you look back on now and you think about all the things he taught you, and and I want to be a good, as good a dad as my dad was to me, because kids these days don't get that at home, and I think that's an important lesson we all should learn that you know, li kids listen to your dads, listen to your moms, because they know what's best for you. It may not seem like it right now, but if you listen to them, you're trying to be a better person for it. And I'm hoping my girls will all turn out to be better for for listening to me. That's great. Lane, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Greg, again, my pleasure. Yeah, thanks for the last two years. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with director Lane Harris coming up next. We didn't get to talk about his nicknames that so many folks know him by, but we did get to talk about his color commentary work on the Coastal Carolina football games. You can catch him on the Coastal Carolina radio network with Matt Hogue. We didn't get to talk to him about his dad raising a goat, but we did get to hear him talk about his father being his real inspiration. We didn't get to talk to him uh, about getting hit like heck, the toughest hit he took in a football uniform, but we did get to talk to him about his amazing three girls, Jordan, Brittany, and Alex, and what they mean to him. Lane Harris, thanks for two years.